Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're enjoying your week so far. Uh, today, what I want to go through is um, the lone PMC position, PMCC position I have left. And I'm going to go over a couple of covered calls uh, that I own and just give a portfolio update on uh, the covered call side of my portfolio. Um, I wanted to add... Uh, Remember last week we talked about the wheel strategy and if you missed it, I'll link it up down up here and down below. You can check that out. Um, I was going to wheel or start a wheel on a stock this week, but uh, when I went to go do it in Fidelity, I found out that in my Roth IRA, I cannot sell cash secured puts. I didn't know that. I thought I could. I never did it before inside my Roth infidelity um but i just i kind of assumed you know how that goes um that i would be able to so that's going to just have to be pushed off um i sent fidelity a, a little friendly note uh, to see if uh, cash secured puts are possible um, from what i read if on fidelity that it's not but so if it's not i will probably be moving my roth ira out of fidelity to somewhere else that will give me the opportunity to sell cash secure puts and that'll be um you know i'll, I'll there, there's not a lot there uh of money involved but uh, i'll be able to wheel a stock at least one stock in that account and i'd like to document that for you guys so stay tuned uh it should happen in the future i don't know how long it's going to take it may take a few weeks but uh definitely something on the menu so if you're new here please like share subscribe do all that good stuff um, on the weekends i normally do etf reviews or income strategies and on wednesdays i normally do uh, some sort of option uh, video uh, whether it be covered calls um, strategies pmccs I'll, i'm gonna try to do something every wednesday but uh, Saturdays are reserved for the ETF uh, uh, reviews and income strategy reviews as well. So if that interests you, please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Down in the pinned comment uh, is ways you can support the channel. Uh, if you do that, that'd be great. Liking and sharing would be awesome. We are almost to that three grand. It's, it's like right there. And it'd be awesome if we hit that before the end of the month. So thank you guys. Appreciate you. So We'll just get in and do the portfolio review and get right to it. So, uh, first one I want to look at is uh, my Kroger position. Now, this is the one that was in my uh, Roth IRA. I had bought 100 shares um, of Kroger on February 10th, and I had sold a uh, covered call with a 3450 strike on the same day that I bought the 100 shares, collected 51 cents. I ended up closing that out for 11 cents on uh, basically 12 days later and reopened a new one at the same strike for 59 cents. Closed that one out uh, for 27 cents, made the profit, and on the next day, I sold one for the same strike, 34.50, at 68 cents now it finally uh reached 34 dollars and 50 cents but i also received dividends in the amount of 18 dollars so uh march 19th it reached my strike price so that means your shares get called away your shares get called away and you have to sell them for that strike price so the shares got sold for 34.50 but from uh february 10th to March 19th, I collected uh, 3930, 3126, 6730, and $18 in dividends for a total profit on the covered call and dividend side of $155.86. And the stock profit from me selling from, from me buying at 3382 and it getting called away at 3450 made me $68 for a total profit of $223.86. Uh, total return on that, 6.62%. And that was in, uh, what, six weeks? 
five weeks. Not a bad return at all. Um, but uh, come Monday, I thought I would just sell a cash secured put and try to get back into Kroger. Fidelity said no go. So uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, stick with me uh, and stay tuned and we'll get something and we'll, we'll wheel something in, in that. In, if it's not in that account, it'll be in a new account. So next up, we'll go to the PMCC that I closed out last week, and that was Consolidated Edison. Consolidated Edison had a run up last week, and uh, you'll see here, just do a review, January 27th, I sold, I mean, I bought a uh, leap put that expired out in January of 2023. I bought it with a strike price of $50 and I paid actually I bought two I averaged down on it but my average pr leap premium that I had to pay was $20.40 for each contract average so I had $4,080 invested in those two leaps so I, then I begun to sell covered calls and I kind of went all over the board and it, it screwed it I messed up. Remember, this was the one that I was using the old, um, the old tracker, and it had some miscalculations in it. So I was ending up uh, selling covered calls below my cost basis, which you know you don't really want to do when you're selling covered calls. So I kind of went ahead. You know, I I bought back at a loss, then I sold and moved the strike up and all that stuff. And um, so this one didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, uh, but I got out of it. And the reason why I got out of it was because there's that $4,000 tied up in it. And if you recall, we had that um, we had that down week. And when you have a when you're trading options, since I trade mostly naked options in interactive brokers, um, when you have leaps bought or stocks bought in with your options account that money doesn't help you so um, when you're having pressure from the market your liquidity goes away that liquidity that I have invested in in the leaps does not help my portfolio at all on the option side it's just essentially money gone if that makes sense um, so I really wanted to get out of it because I was under pressure for that week and I just needed to, I needed that room to, to be able to ride out um, the, the little down market we had in the options account. So uh, consolidated us and made a move up and uh, I exited the covered calls on March 17th. Um, overall, we lost $171.55 in covered call premium but we made it up in the leap profits because we ended up selling the, the two leaps for $22.70, two contracts for uh, leap profits of $460 just on the leaps, total profits minusing the, the losses on the covered calls, uh, total profits was $288.45 for a total of 7.07% in what is that six or seven weeks I still can't complain about it so even though you know I didn't do the cover calls as well as I should have um, you know still making seven percent on your money in six seven weeks is nothing to sneeze at okay so consolidated Edison is gone um, so that leaves me with one last PMCC and that's my Pfizer PMCC that I'm still holding on to and I have three contracts of Pfizer PMCCs, or I have three leaps, and uh, they have an average of, uh, they're a $25 strike price, and I have an average cost basis right now of $10.76. So I've been selling um, covered calls, and I had that same problem that I had with Consolidated Edison, where I was selling premium, where I was selling my covered calls too low. So that's when I got, uh, uh, when I moved it up to June, I moved the uh, strike 
the expiration date to June and I moved the strike up to $36 from $34.50 because you'll see right here my short strike break even is $35.76 so I had to do that right well this week actually uh, Monday I was looking at the uh, was it Monday or was it Friday I don't remember but I was looking at it and I said man uh, Pfizer's been going up right and this call has not um, decrease I mean increased in value or you know I, I can buy it back for almost the same that I sold it for not too long ago because see I sold it on um, March 4th and on March 22nd I bought it back for four cents more each and that was like you know I can buy it back and then I can bring it back to a more closer expiration date and move the strike price up so what I did was uh, I bought them back took a $13 loss on it then I resold um, I have on here 319 but I don't think that's true it might be um, I resold three contracts at a 3750 strike for April 16th for only 16 cents a piece for 45 bucks but you know I'll profit if you know Pfizer I'm, I'm banking on I'm banking on the stock running and the leaps increasing in share price I hope that makes sense um, there's a lot of moving parts in PMCC so sometimes you get kind of tongue-twisted but um, if the stock moves up your leaps that you purchased should move up in value but your covered calls will go down in value hope that makes sense so me getting out of that at the $13 loss allowed me to give the stock some room to run and allow me to 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 put some profit in there and bring the expiration date of those calls that I had from June 18th back down to April 16th so I think that was the smartest move I could have made even though it was only 16 cents on the covered calls I wanted to give the stock room to run and I wanted to get my uh, expiration date back closer to me so so far we've made two hundred and five dollars and ninety cents on covered calls on Pfizer uh, leap profits we are still down hundred and thirty five dollars so we have total profits of seventy dollars and ninety cents 2% return on the money since January 26th. I'm okay with that. Um, if we can just keep going and going um, and selling these uh, cash secured puts, keep following it up. Um, these leaps, you know, if Pfizer continues on a, on a move up, these leaps will, you know, grow in value. So that's Pfizer. I kind of ran my mouth on that one probably confused everybody I apologize <laughs> now last but not least I have rocket shares um, the mortgage company rocket um, I don't know if I shared this one or not but um, I on February 11th I bought a hundred shares and I paid twenty dollars and seventy cents for them and I immediately sold a covered call that expired March 12th with a twenty one dollar and fifty cent strike price now I don't have the exit price on here exit date but uh, it was probably around February 22nd I bought that call back for a dollar 15 and profited forty nine dollars and sixty cents and what I did was I sold a another covered call but I went out to April 16th and I did a twenty five dollar strike price and I collected a dollar ten on that uh, on that covered call problem is rocket declared a special dividend it wasn't a normal dividend so when when a company declares a special dividend the price gets adjusted and your options get adjusted so uh, rocket declared a one dollar and eleven cent dividend special dividend so the strike prices that you sold calls and puts on uh, had to be adjusted by that special dividend amount so that's why my $25 strike is now $23 and a 89 cent strike so it's still uh, 
we still got some time uh, rocket is so far only selling for $22.99 um, if uh, if it gets called away I'm fine with that um, if I get to keep it I'm fine with that also because cover calls on rocket are pretty good and you can look at it right now uh, as of today I have two hundred and sixty nine dollars and ninety cents in covered call and dividend profit and so far I'm up two hundred and twenty nine dollars on capital appreciation on the stock so total profit four hundred and ninety eight dollars and ninety cents as it sits today uh, with a twenty four point one zero percent total profit now if I didn't sell those covered calls you know this would wouldn't be so nice right but my max gain is pretty capped, right? Because I have a 2389 strike. We're sitting at 2299. That's about 3 4% move. If it makes that 3 4% move, 3 or 4% move, whatever it might be, by April 16th, then I'll cap my uh, total profit at about 28% from February 11th to March 16th. So. 27 28 percent return in in two months i'll take that all day long right so hope you guys enjoyed um like i said stay tuned um i'll do some more updates uh this weekend i'll have my qild versus gw covered call income strategy uh update and i've been running that for about 10 months now i think and uh, made some changes on it so um, I think it'll be interesting you, you, you'd want to tune in so make sure you tune in this Saturday uh, we'll go over that um, like I said stay tuned for more uh, covered calls and possibly wheel strategy updates uh, in the future make sure you like share subscribe hit that bell notification uh, support me down there in the pinned comments with all the ways you can support the channel Appreciate every last one of you. You guys have a great week and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you.